X is a laser microscope asterisk that you use to look at integrated circuits. Unlike the microscope that I used in my laser fault injection video, this laser is a longer wavelength, which cannot induce faults in circuits. Instead, it is used for imaging. Basically, for physics-y regions that are largely beyond me, shooting a laser at a chip and seeing the reflection gives you a much, much higher resolution image than looking at it with a camera cold enough to give you frostbite? I think, I don't know, what do you think I am, a medical professional? Oh, and here's the coolest part. You could use this laser to see what the circuit is doing. For instance, the bright spots on this scan right here are a lookup table and a register flipping back and forth at 10 megahertz. Furthermore, with an external reference signal, we can probe these bright spots and see what it looks like. With lasers! <laughs> okay, where was I? Uh, these two things primarily exist for failure analysis, since chip fabrication is not a 100% reliable process. However, these same techniques work for reverse engineering of working ICs. Basically, this matters because of how the chip industry works. For example, every iPhone from the past decade or so has a system on chip designed by Apple in the US, based on IP leased from ARM in the UK, manufactured by TSMC in Taiwan, using machines built by ASML in the Netherlands, and assembled into a phone by Foxconn in China. It's an insane level of globalization to make the most advanced tech happen, and when things get political, no one trusts anyone. So basically, some form of protection from reverse engineering is cool. Apparently they only made like a uh, under half a million, but it is official. <laughs> So the thing about lasers is that they heat things up, and by things I mean silicon. This is crucial, as heat affects the propagation delay of digital logic. In fact, this correlation between heat and delay is, at least partially, why your computer needs cooling. If it gets too hot, the delay will get so big that it prevents the chip from functioning at a reasonable speed, if even at all. Therefore, if we can build a sensor to measure propagation delay, we can see when the laser hits the chip based on the increase in propagation delay. In fact, such a sensor exists. It was originally made for something else, which is a bit much to explain in this video, but basically... So here's how the sensor works. Registers latch the data on their input to their output on a rising clock edge, like so. Whatever binary state the input is at on the moment of the clock edge, the output will become. However, in order for this to happen reliably, the input must be stable for some time before the clock edge and some time after the clock edge, known as setup and hold time respectively. If the input changes within this window dictated by the setup and hold times, that's a timing violation. And as a result, the output is unpredictable, or metastable as the cool kids like to say. The sensor is based on this metastable behavior. Basically, if you have a clock signal go through two paths, one goes through a lookup table and then to the data input of a register, and the other goes to the clock input of the same register. On both paths, there is a configurable delay line, which is process, voltage, and temperature invariant. We set these delays such that the output is metastable. If the propagation delay of the data path is too low, then the rising edge of the data input will come well before the boundary of the setup time, and the register will always output 1. Conversely, if it is too high, the rising edge will come well after the boundary the whole time, and the register will always output 0. We want to set this delay such that the rising edge comes up just at the boundary of the setup time, meaning the output is mostly ones with a small amount of bent stability. As the laser heats up the chip, it will slightly increase the delay, specifically through the lookup table, which will slightly increase the amount of zeros at the output. If you can detect the laser based on this, you can do all sorts of invasive maneuvers. For instance, in FPGAs, you can move the sensitive information around, like this. In fact, certain FPGAs actually have what's known as partial reconfiguration built into them. But this one doesn't, so it's a bit slow. We detect the laser by seeing if the number of zeros in a fixed period of time exceeds a certain threshold. It's not perfect, since it has the potential for false positives due to various environmental factors, so there's a rabbit hole of statistical analysis to go down in the future. Nonetheless, tuning is pretty simple, since the constant 1 or 0 outputs work really well to judge if it's too high or too low. 
Thus, you can implement a really efficient binary search to find the right tune. Also, once it is tuned, it tends to stay relatively stable, so long as the ambient conditions are stable as well. So yeah, that's the gist of it. I guess if you want to read more, there's a paper linked in the description. I don't know how to end this video. Bye.